Okay, while we've got the liner brush, let's go ahead and come around our unicorn. And I think we were using this yellowish green color here. So we'll, I've got a little bit of the light green on there. We can pull in some Indian yellow. Let's grab some uh, linseed oil. Got a plumber come to the house tomorrow. Now I do some plumbing, some, but he's going to install a, a water faucet in my backyard, which I don't have. I have one in the front, none in the back. So he's going to drill through the uh, kitchen, under the kitchen cabinet, run a line. And it's just a project besides not having the time to do it. Um, I like this guy, he's a good plumber. He installed my water heater. Again, I could have done that. But in these manufactured homes, they, they use this little half inch PVC uh, pipe underneath all the just cheap stuff. And uh, they had that stuff running to my water heater he replaced all the piping, all new lines, had everything all cleaned up, just professionals all get out. And I thought, you know what? I couldn't have done that. So uh, sometimes you're capable of doing stuff. And, you know, if it's something you're comfortable with, I say do it. You know, I, I installed flooring uh, Pergo wood flooring throughout my house uh, over the last year and a half. I bought it, you know, box by box, a little here, a little there. Uh, I'd move my wife's hospital bed over here, cut a little bit of carpet up, roll it up, take it out to the trash, dirt and dust and all that stuff. And you've got staples in the floor. You know, I just worked on it a little by little and it looks good. Um, I couldn't afford to have somebody install something like that. So I did that myself. When it comes to electricity and plumbing and stuff like that, I usually let other people do it that are capable. Making sure that our, our color kind of matches the rest of this. And what I'll do is I'll just put this solid color in and then I'll take a look at the way our path looks and maybe put some spots of color to make it look consistent, like it belongs. Oh man, my hand's getting shaky. I think this episode, um, I think I'm gonna be breaking this up into a couple of episodes. I, it seems like I've been working on this all day, off and on. While I've been talking to you guys, my battery on my cameras died twice, and I had to stop for an hour each time and charge it back up. You didn't even know that, but I did. Um, got, a, got a few phone calls had to take some important phone calls. My wife is on hospice, so one of the phone calls was uh, was the hospice office. The nurses calling to check in on us. Um, they only come out once a week to see how things are and if I need anything. Um, I basically do all the skilled nursing stuff myself. And I've been doing it for about 12 years now, taking care of her. Um, blood pressure checks, uh, you know, O2, pulse ox, diabetes uh, tests, insulin shots, making sure she's got her pills. Uh, she doesn't know any of that stuff. My wife doesn't. So, um, you know, I do all, I make sure I take care of all that stuff. So sometimes I got my hands full. I even did some laundry while I was filming the episode. I was multitasking.
while I was changing the batteries on the on the camera when it went out, I put a load of laundry in the wash, let that run through, got it in the dryer, and uh, yeah. Oh, I'm great at multitasking. That's a joke. I'm terrible at multitasking. Anybody that knows me knows I can't. I'm okay doing one thing at a time. And I can do that well. No good at multitasking. Uh, I had a friend uh, text me. This is a online gaming friend game that I've been playing for about five or six years, uh, uh, fantasy elves or human, you choose what you are and you build towns and, and that. And uh, this is a, a woman who uh, was in our group and she left, but kept in contact with me in, in that. And she texted me that uh, uh, to send prayers to her family. Her aunt Edith had passed away, who was a quadriplegic amputee, uh, surviving quadriplegic amputee. And I guess Aunt Edith had um, just the most positive attitude and everybody that she was around just, you know, got positivity. So even with her disability, um, you know, apparently this woman was, was just, you know, a beacon of light to other people. And that's, that's just awesome. So uh, I send my thoughts and prayers uh, to my friend and her family. And uh, her name's Kathy, my friend. And we know there's gonna be a shadow under the horse, this unicorn. I know the shadow's gonna start there from the feet. And if the sun's here and we draw a straight line down, let's change that right there, blend that out. I'm getting ahead of myself. You know, I want to fill in the unicorn, but basically our shadow is probably going to come this direction with the feet. Something like that. And then the body would be here and that. Over to that leg. And then the tail. Tail up to the back. That's the foot that's up in the air, we're going to say. Might as well, I've gone this far, we might as well put this shadow in. I'm just using my big liner brush. I don't think we see the head uh, here. Not in this shadow, which is probably a good thing because I'd probably mess it up. <laughs> uh, we'll get the tail and everything else. Okay, let me grab my other brush. It's got this other color. We put this little grassy stuff that's kind of fallen over the edge. And I'm just cleaning that up kind of blending the existing pathway out towards that. I don't know that I want to, I thought about lining both sides with trees or, or something like that, but I kind of like this open and being able to see this misty clouds on each side and how it goes down. 
Uh, I don't know how you guys feel about it. I know you can't tell me right now and say, do this, Rob. No, do that. Um, I'm just going to have to uh, figure it out on my own. But I'm leaning towards less is more on this. Uh, we've already done quite a bit on this painting. So I know there's two more things I want to do. One of them is fill in the unicorn. The other one, you may or may not have seen coming. But we're going to do that right now. I keep you in suspense, huh? You're like, do what? Do what? I'll show you. Let's grab our liner brush. Okay, we're going in straight titanium white with our liner brush. And we're going to come up here. I think what I want to do next is uh, fix these cliffs. I'm not real happy with them. So I'm going into some linseed oil, a little bit of midnight black. And we're going to fix some of these uh, cliffs. I want them a little darker. Oh man, we had a thunderstorm today. Oh boy. It poured. Had a river coming down the street. It was. Thought we were going to get swept away. I was. I did get a flash flood warning on my phone though, but uh, it was coming down. Thunder, lightning. We needed it though. Haven't had a good rain in a while. I appreciate you guys sticking with me. If you've if you've watched. The, uh, you know, part one, two, three, and this is part four now. And stuck with me, I appreciate it. I didn't know this painting was going to, you know, take as long as it did. I think I'm achieving what I'm trying to do. I want the light parts of this cliff um, are the parts that are sticking out a little farther. And then you've got these pockets of black where it kind of goes in and out and in and out. If you ever look, you know, cliffs look different. You can have rocks or sometimes they look like this, especially in a fantasy painting. You know, you just do whatever you want because it's your painting. That's right. While we've got this midnight black going, I've seen a couple things that I want to change right now as we're going. Um, and I saw it as I was painting something else and I thought, oh well, come back to it. We're gonna come up here onto this, uh, this top cliff up here and put a little black in up here. Just one of those things, you know, I always tell you stand back and look at your painting. Sometimes it's not finished when you think it is. Sometimes in the middle of painting it, you change your mind or you see something you want to, it's not so much changing your mind, you just see something you want to add. And uh, I put this waterfall in and I, and I was like, man, it would be cool if I had one coming off the top up there and uh, we could even... Uh, you know, we could throw a tree up there too if we wanted. You don't have to add a tree into your uh, painting. If you're following along and you're doing this unicorn painting, you don't have to put a tree in it. You don't even have to do the waterfalls if you don't want to. It's all up to you on what you want to put in there. Um, I'm just seeing some, some things that might be kind of cool. Big old tree, just 
throw it out sideways. Okay. There's a big stone right here that that's on the edge of this cliff. And we don't know where the, these waterfalls are going down through the clouds, way down. You know, we don't know how high up this castle is. It's up in the clouds, above the clouds. Okay, let's grab our palette knife. Let's come into that midnight black. Mine has a little linseed oil and a little bit of white, but it's mostly black. Okay, we gotta figure out. I think we want, or I want, some boulders in here somewhere. Some rocks on this pathway. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Here's my thinking. There you go. Instead of lining this path with trees, or a couple trees, which would block our waterfall, possibly block the castle, we don't want to do that. I'm thinking of something to put along this pathway that's not a tall tree. And I'm thinking, maybe there's some boulders. There's a couple up here uh, on this waterfall. So let's, let's put a boulder or two in here and uh, let's just come over here and, yep, we're just gonna, looks like I just screwed up the painting. Kinda does. But we shall see. Hopefully I didn't. Another thing to remember Things that are closer to us are bigger. As they get farther away down this path, they're gonna be smaller. I, I know you guys already knew that, but you know, we don't wanna have a huge rock back here that's bigger than the one that's closest to us. Just, just when you're doing your painting, you know, as you get farther away from your eye, make, make things a little smaller. I guess I could put this on with a brush, but kind of like the palette knife. Remember on another episode, I think I was talking about the palette knife. I'm not really all that good with the palette knife, so I need to, you know, if you're not good with something, practice. Use it more. I need practice with the palette knife. All right, I think we're going to put another big rock that kind of comes over the edge and disappears over here. We don't know where comes down into the clouds and pops up over the edge right here. Think it'll work? I mean, I went from not knowing what I was gonna put there to at least I've got something, some idea. Okay, maybe we'll put one more, another one off the, uh-oh. Well, I'll have to clean that up, won't I? I've gone a little too far out with that rock. So let's come into a little Indian yellow with our palette knife. All right. Maybe one more at the corner here, I'm thinking. Grab some midnight black. Maybe we've got a rock that kind of comes up. And the path goes around this rock. I'm just gonna take a little flat brush and go back into the midnight black. Let's draw a little shadow line right at the base of this. Maybe thin it down with a little linseed oil a little more transparent. Just do a little shadow down here by the rock. Not that it would have too much of a shadow because the sun's coming from this side. This rock over here would definitely have more of a shadow. In fact, it might come out. Might come out here. 
here like this. Be a little darker up here, have a little shadow. I'm just use my finger to feather that shadow out, blend it a little bit. I don't always use my fingers when I'm painting, but I did do finger painting, I, I think in kindergarten. So maybe I'm, you know, recalling some of those memories of finger painting. Let's get some more linseed oil. Definitely want to thin this black out because uh, yeah, that makes it more, this will be more of a shadow color, not so much straight black. And there's going to be a shadow here for, for this rock. And it's higher here. It's going to be, it's going to cast a shadow farther out from here. Less back here because the, the rock isn't as big right there. So we just want to make sure that we come out a little farther to represent that peak of the rock. That makes sense. And I'm just going to take and blend this a little bit. Okay. All right. We're getting there. We're getting there. One more thing before we do the unicorn. I know you guys are like, do the unicorn already, Rob. Do it. Um, we're getting there. We're getting there. I want to change these uh, trees here. Uh, I want to make them a little bit bigger, I believe. Okay. One thing I do want to do, this shadow on the castle has been bugging me. I'm thinking the shadow uh, uh, with the sun coming down, the shadow would be a different shape. It would, it would actually come back here more like that. Straight back. That would be the shadow of the castle. If we just put some little grassy things. Okay, I got my Prussian blue. I'm gonna grab some titanium white. Bring that over here. Least little bit of Prussian blue. Very little. Now, we used, I used spray paint for the sky. And you can see part of the sky. I know I've got the camera tilted down so you can see uh, what I'm doing down here. But I think it was called wildflower blue. What I'm gonna try to do is mix up a blue that's kind of similar to that sky color. Because I, I want to keep the colors consistent. You know, purple castle, we're going to do a purple unicorn. Um, you know, the greenery kind of matches. The only thing, we don't have any uh, red from the planet, but I just, I thought I'd bring some blue into our, into our painting. As we get farther back and these get smaller, it's going to be hard to do, you know, that little circle of petals around the flower. So we, we're we just going to make the indication at the top of these. We'll just do a couple dots of these uh, green stems, the flower stems. We'll just do a couple of dots instead of four or five and trying to do a circle. We'll just make the indication. There's some blue flowers here. And stand back and look. And I think this is similar to our, you know, I don't know. It's close enough, I think, to our sky color that it ties in, you know. It's a nice complementary color. Well, before we get too far, let's go over here. So that violet, 
It's actually called Violet. And we're gonna mix titanium white with it. Grab my flat brush, go into the purple. I got so used to looking at this painting over the last few days um, being white. And I was like, kind of looks good, you know, white unicorn. Unicorn can be any color. But I said purple unicorn, we're going to do a purple unicorn. I'm using the dark purple, a little bit of black, mixing those, using my liner brush. All right, we're going to go into titanium white. Just a little bit. And a little bit of highlight here and there. What do you guys think? I think we're going to call this one done. I like it. I like it a lot. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, let's come, let's go into a little of this uh, liquid white on our liner brush. Come down here in the corner. And there, we've got a sign painting. Set my palette down. We did a purple painting. Sassy wanted a purple painting. What do you think, Sass? Oh, I like it, Bobby. I like it too. You're welcome. Let's do it again soon. Thank you guys so much for hanging through four parts of this painting. Uh, probably one of the most difficult paintings we've done so far, I've done so far, but I think it turned out really well. I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you on the next episode. Bye-bye.